Now we're going to revisit some examples from the previous lecture, drawing environment diagrams for them, and discussing exactly what's going on, so that it becomes clear that it's actually possible to have multiple different environments active during the course of the execution of a single program. So before I go into the example, let me just review everything that I told you last time about user-defined functions. You saw the execution rules and evaluation rules for these various steps, but they were strewn across lots of slides. Here's it all on one slide with all the vocabulary you need. A def statement looks like this. The whole thing is a def statement. The name of the function being defined is there. The formal parameter is within parentheses. There can be more than one formal parameter, and then they will be separated by commas. Indented below the first line is what's called the body. It can have multiple lines, but in this case, there's just a single return statement. And the return statement is the word return followed by a return expression, which is the expression that gets evaluated whenever the function gets called. Okay, so what happens exactly when into the interpreter I type this def statement? Actually, nothing gets multiplied, but what does happen is that a new function is created, and the name square is bound to that function in the current frame. Now, nothing gets multiplied until there's a call expression that calls that function. Okay, so call expression looks like this. We saw that on the first day. Here we have an operator, in this case the name square, and the operator evaluates to a function, the function that squares things. That's the one that we just defined. In environment diagrams, we're going to write functions by writing func and then the signature, which includes the name and the formal parameters. Inside the parentheses go the operands. The operands are expressions, so the operand is 2 plus 2. The argument that gets passed to the function is a value which you get by evaluating the operand expression. So I actually add two and two together, I get four, and that gets passed into the function that squares, that we just defined. So when we see a call expression and we want to evaluate it, here's what happens. The operator and operand sub-expressions are evaluated. Then the function that we got from the operator is called on the arguments that we got from the operands. Finally, there's a process of calling or applying that function, which we can draw using a diagram like this, which is the function signature inside of a little tube. We pass in an argument, we get out a return value, and in order to actually do this, in order to compute the return value from the argument, there are several steps. First, we create a new frame. The parameters are bound to the arguments, so x is bound to 4. Then the body is executed in that new environment, which means we actually do the multiplying of 4 times 4 to get 16. Okay, so what do I mean by there are multiple environments in one diagram? Well, let's look at this example from last time where we define square as just multiplying x by itself. But then we call it twice in a nested fashion. So we're going to square the square of 3. And we saw that that gave us 81, but here's why. So before we actually evaluate square square 3, but we've already executed the import and the def statement, this is our environment. A single global frame with the name mul bound to the function that multiplies, and the name square bound to the function square which we define. Okay, now we want to evaluate square, square 3. We do that by evaluating a call expression, which means figuring out that the operator is the square function, and that square 3 has a value. To evaluate square 3, we have to find that square is an operator, which is the square function, again, and 3 is the number 3. And then we apply the square function to the argument 3, which 
is a user-defined function, so we have to go through that last set of steps. Those steps are introduce a new frame. That's what you see here. So this frame we've labeled as f1 just because it's the first one we've introduced. It came from the square function, and its parent is the global frame. I'll explain that in just a moment. Okay, after creating the frame, we bind the formal parameter x to the argument value 3, and then we can evaluate the return expression, which means multiplying x times x. Now what's x? Well, it's 3. This is the first frame of the current environment, where 3 is defined. And we get a return value of 9. So this return value we can draw into our expression tree there. And next thing we'll do is we'll apply the square function, that same function, to a new argument, the argument 9. And so we repeat the same steps that we did before. We introduce a new frame. We bind the formal parameter x to the argument value, which this time is 9 instead of 3. And then we multiply x times x, which is 9 times 9 in this case, and we get 81, the return value and the value of the whole expression. So in this diagram, we have multiple environments. An environment is a sequence of frames. So far, it's just the global frame alone, or a local frame and then the global frame. These parent annotations tell you where the next frame in an environment is. So let's see if we can find all the environments in this diagram. There's one. There's a second one, which is this local frame followed by its parent, the global frame. And there's a third one this local frame followed by its parent, the global frame. There's no environment that includes all three frames at the same time. These names, like mall and square and x, have no meaning without environments that tell us what they mean. So every expression is evaluated in the context of an environment, and the environment is there to tell us what the names mean in that expression. A name evaluates to the value bound to that name in the earliest frame of the current environment in which that name is found. That should sound familiar because I said it last time, and I told you it was really important. Here's a demonstration of what I mean. When we finally evaluate mol xx the second time around, when we've passed in 9 as an argument and created this frame, the current environment consists of two frames, this one called F2 and then the global frame, which is what I've tried to draw here. When we go about looking up what x means, we first look in the local frame. Oh, there it is. x is 9. What about mul? Well, mul isn't in the local frame, but we did look there first. See that animation? We went down there and looked there first. There was no mole, so then we looked in the next frame of the environment, which was the global frame, and there was mole, and so we know that we're supposed to multiply 9 times 9. Okay, so names can have different meanings in different environments. And that was the situation in an example last time, when we had square as both the name and the formal parameter of the same function. And things still worked. We're going to understand why. So a call expression and the body of the function that's being called are evaluated in different environments. Here was the example, def square square return mol square square, and then we square 4. So what's happening here? Well, giving 4 the name square in order to multiply it by itself. In the environment diagram, where here we're drawing the diagram uh, having just executed this return statement, there are two different environments, and square here versus square there are evaluated in different environments. So this square was evaluated in the global frame. It isn't indented, right? We just got down here. This frame didn't exist yet. We figured out what square meant. Square just meant the function that squared. Then 
When we actually called that square function on the number 4, we created this frame. Now we're in a new environment where square means something else. And when we looked up this square, we got the number 4. Why do we get this one and not this one? Because we always look in the earliest frame of the current environment first. So we look in the first frame and then the second frame. And we only choose the first one because uh, a name evaluates to the value bound of that name in the earliest frame of the current environment in which the name is found. That's why this example returns 16.